In a world consumed by iniquity, Noah was chosen by God to build a giant ark to save the earth's creatures from the flood that was soon to come. For years he toils, forging and sowing, while the taunts and threats of his neighbors echo around him. But Noah knew that his mission was predetermined by God, and he continued to work, trusting in God's guidance and protection. At last, the day came when the rains began to fall and the waters rose to engulf the earth. Noah and his family, along with the animals he had gathered, huddled in the ark and waited for the waters to recede. When the ark finally came to rest on Mount Ararat, Noah came out, blinking in the bright sunlight, to survive the new world that he had been born from, the destruction. More than once, archaeologists and scientists have been skeptical of the locations mentioned in the Bible. Many times, however, they end up finding what they're looking for exactly where it is listed in the ancient book. Where is Noah's Ark today? How many researchers have searched for it over the years? What did they find on Mount Ararat? These are just some of the questions we will be seeking answers to in this video. The Story of Noah and His Ark Noah was a good and righteous man who loved the Lord with all his heart and soul. One day God spoke to Noah and told him that he would send a great flood to destroy the earth, but that he and his family would be saved if they built an ark and gathered two of every kind of animal on earth. Building the vessel was not an easy undertaking, especially in those days when there was no electricity and no power tools. But Noah was determined to do what God commanded him to do so, so he set to work, forging, cutting, and shaping the wood with his own hands. For many years, he worked tirelessly on the ark, even when the people around him mocked him and thought he was crazy. However, he did not care about the opinions of others because he knew that he was doing the right thing by following God's will. And so he continued to build day after day until finally the ark was completed. When the day of the flood came, Noah and his family gathered in the ark waiting for the storm to pass. For 40 days and 40 nights, the rain continued to pour, and the world became a vast ocean. Then the rain stopped, as suddenly as it came. The waters began to recede, and the ark rested on Mount Ararat. We find confirmation of this in the Bible. Genesis chapter 8, verses 3 through 6. Little by little, the waters receded from the earth, and after 150 days, the waters began to recede. And on the seventh day of the seventh month, the ark rested on the mountains of Arat. The waters receded continually until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains appeared. Then, after 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark which he made. When God tells them Noah and his family leave the ark to explore the new world they had been born from the destruction. After looking around, they see that everything is different now. The world is fresh, new, and full of possibilities. As they look toward the horizon, they realize they've been given a second chance, a chance to start over and make amends. Undoubtedly, the story of Noah is perhaps one of the most outstanding biblical narratives. Most of us are used to accepting these parables as pleasant and instructive stories with mythological value. but. Is it possible that this story has left physical evidence and has been found for other places, events, and objects mentioned in the Bible? Where does Noah's Ark lie today? This question was asked long before we asked it in this video. Specifically, the first recorded expedition to search for Noah's Ark was conducted in 1829 and was led by a Frenchman named Félix Bonjour. He and his team climbed Mount Ararat in Turkey but failed to find any trace of the ark. Since then, numerous expeditions have been organized in an attempt to find the ark. The biggest development related to the search for the physical remains of the biblical artifact was announced by a group of researchers from the Christian organization Noah's Ark Ministries International. They announced they have discovered the remains of the ark, which they believe is buried under the snow and volcanic debris of Mount Ararat in Turkey. However, this claim has been met with skepticism because archaeologists and historians who have noted that no previous expedition to find the physical remains of the Ark has been successful. 
Now is the time to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Paul Zeminski, an archaeologist at Stony Brook University, says he knows of no previous expedition that has searched for the Ark and actually found it. The latest discovery claim was made by a Turkish and Chinese researchers who are part of the international group Noah's Ark Ministries and who announced their findings in Hong Kong where the group is based. Although the researchers stated they believe there is a 99.9% .9 probability that the remains they found are from Noah's Ark, there is no conclusive evidence to support this claim. However, according to the research group, in 2007 and 2008, they discovered seven large wooden chambers buried near the summit of Mount Ararat at an altitude of 13,000 feet, 4,000 meters, above sea level. In October 2009, they returned to the site with the film crew to document their findings. The group claims that this discovery matches the final resting place of Noah's Ark, according to the Bible. Man Fei Yun, who is a member of the team, stated that the wooden structure they entered was divided into different spaces that was the same one mentioned in the historical accounts. The team claims that the radiocarbon dating of the wood taken from the top secret discovery site shows that the Ark is approximately 4,800 years old, which coincides with the time of Noah's flood, as suggested in the Bible. It should be noted that the claim has been met with skepticism and has not been verified by independent sources. In general, claims about the discovery have been met with a great deal of skepticism. Even scholar Todd Wood, who interprets the Bible literally, is skeptical. Wood is the director of the Center for the Study of Origins at Bryan College in Tennessee, which takes a creationist approach to biology. According to him, if the young Earth chronology is accepted, the radiocarbon dating in which the radiostotope carbon-14 is measured to determine the age of organic objects must be reinterpreted. Wood believes that the radiocarbon dates need to be recalibrated. He also believes that Noah's Ark will never be found. His theory suggests that the Ark was probably used for building materials after the flood. Wood notes that if you had just stepped off the Ark and there were no trees around, you would probably use the huge boat made of wood as a building material for a new home. Therefore, he believes that the Ark was probably dismantled and used as building materials. Scientists defend their skepticism on the subject by citing several reasons. First of all, according to Jack Sassoon, professor of Jewish and Biblical Studies at Vanderbilt University, the identification of Mount Ararat with Uratu, an ancient kingdom named Ararat in eastern Turkey, did not come until later. Also, there's no geological evidence of a massive flood in Turkey about 4,000 years ago. Paul Zeminski, an archaeologist at Stony Brook University, agrees that Noah's Ark International Ministry researchers are not following the archaeological, historical, and geological data. In fact, according to Zeminski, they play a completely different ball game than the others. The archaeologist goes on to suggest that this may be a shrine erected by the early Christians in honor of the belief in the site of Noah's Ark. In this hypothetical case, however, it would not be 4,000 years old, since the Bible was not yet written during that period. Biblical scholar Jack Sassoon believes that the biblical authors intended the story of Noah's Ark to be an allegory rather than a historical account. The story was used to present a scenario in which mankind was punished for its wickedness, drawing attention to the idea of a benevolent God who expects mankind to be righteous. As if for now, the not-so-secret location of the Darupinar boat shape, Noah's Ark discovered on September 11, 1959, by Turkish Army Captain Ilhan Darupinar, paves the way for a far greater possibility of the ancient artifact's true location. It is believed that the remains of the actual Noah's Ark are buried in this boat-shaped formation. Major research and interest in the site began in the 1970s to the mid-1990s. American researcher Ron Wyatt and others, including Turkish scientists, are working on the site. And in 2014 and again in 2019, additional independent private geophysical surveys of the Ark formation were done which showed layers and interesting angular structures underground. The new GPR data shows parallel lines and angular structures at depths of 2.5 meters 
8 feet, to 6 meters, 20 feet. These parallel lines and right angles below the surface are something we should not see in natural or geological information. Interestingly, the fact that the formation of the boat is the exact dimensions of the ark mentioned in the Bible in Genesis chapter 6 verse 15 is also confirmed. And thus you shall make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, and its breadth, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. In the fall of 2021, a Turkish scientific team with American media, including the History Channel, began the most complete geophysical survey and scientific investigation of this site to date, using as many modern methods as possible. Unfortunately, scientific research will mainly focus on how to best preserve the object for future generations, which suggests that we will hardly know what lies beneath this formation at any time soon. Although there have been many expeditions and claims of discovery, the truth remains elusive to this day. Perhaps, after all, the charm of the story lies not in the physical existence of the Ark, but in the deeper meaning behind it. The story of Noah and his Ark is a symbol of hope in the face of adversity, a perseverance amid chaos, and of the power of faith in the face of doubt. Regardless of whether the Ark is ever found, this story continues to encourage us to strive for something greater, to believe in something beyond ourselves, and to never lose hope in the face of adversity. May we continue to be captivated by the mysteries of the world around us. Subscribe to our channel because we don't want to stop exploring the unknown.